Aloha everybody, this is Gigi from Kauai Community College. This is a video on the mean value theorem. So uh, suppose you have a function that is continuous on a closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB. Then what will happen? Hmm, let's take a look. Here, suppose this right here is A. If that is A, we go across. This is F of A. Here is B, and we are interested in the interval in between A and B. And so if that's B, um, the Y value is F of B. Right now, as we have seen before, so this, um, so this, this function we know is continuous because we can draw from A to B without lifting up our pencil. And it's differentiable because you can visualize the slope of the tangent line um, throughout the curve between A and B. So we're only interested between the interval um, between A and B right there, okay? Now, um, we know that the um, slope of the secant line, which is this line right here, okay? So that line right there connecting A and B is what we call the secant line. Okay, now the secant line has a slope of change in y over change in x, right? So that slope right there is f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. Or we can say that is the average rate of change between a and b. Now what the mean value theorems will say is that if you have a, a function that is um that is continuous and differentiable uh, in such a way then there must be some value in between a and b so we're looking for some value between a and b such that what will happen such that um what will happen is that there is a C in between such that the oh the 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 slope of the tangent line is going to be um, the same as the slope of the uh, secant line. So as we can see right here, that tangent line right there has the same slope of that secant line. Or you can see, say, right about here, that tangent line right there has the same slope of the secant line meaning those lines right here, those tangent lines, are parallel to the secant line, right? So here we go. The mean value theorem say, mean value theorem say that if you have a function that is continuous on a closed interval between A and um, B, and differentiable on the open interval, then there must be one point C, must be at least one. In this case, we see that there is a C1 and there is a C2. There actually are two points um, because of this graph um, in between A and B, such that the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line or the average rate of change, right? And we see right here, uh, f prime of c, which is the slope of the tangent line, is going to have to equal to the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line. So that's what the mean value theorem says. Now, um, in short, you can visualize this um, picture in your head when you are thinking about the mean value theorem. There's a secant line, and if it's continuous and differentiable in, in that interval, then there must be a point C where the slope of the tangent line, which being F prime of C, has to be the same as the slope of the secant line, which is F of B minus F of A, all divided by B minus A, right? So these must be the same. All those two lines are parallel. 
Okay, so suppose you have a function that is a polynomial. So we know that a polynomial function is continuous always. So it is continuous on the interval negative 1 to 3. So we have that point check. Also, that it's differentiable because um, it's differentiable because um, it's a polynomial and we can always take the derivative. So the mean value theorem applies here to this function. on the interval negative 1 to 3. Okay, so what it's saying is that um, whatever the average rate of change is, there must be a point C in between negative 1 and 3 where f prime of C is the same as the average rate of change. Okay, so let's go and find that f of 3 minus f of negative 1 all divided by 3 minus a negative 1. So f of 3, when you plug in the function value, you will get um, 27 minus 9 minus 24, which would give you a negative 12 minus, plug in negative 1, you will have negative 1 minus 1 plus 8, and that would be 6, all divided by 3 minus a negative 1 is 4, which is negative 18 over 4. Negative 18 over 4 is reduced to be negative 9 over 2. Okay, so the mean value theorem mean value theorem suggests that there must be a point C in the interval between negative 1 and 3 such that f prime of C has to equal to negative 9 over 2. Okay, that would be the slope of that tangent line has to be negative. There is a point where the slope is negative 9 over 2. Now, most of the time you are just interested in knowing whether or not there is. Um, you don't necessarily always have to go calculate that where it is exactly. Um, but since this is a polynomial and I can make a point as to, yeah, I can actually go and find out where it is exactly, right? So. Um, we can see that the, the derivative, so the derivative f prime of x is 3x squared minus 2x minus 8, right? So um, we would say here, hey, the mean value theorem said there has to be a point, meaning there would be a solution to this equation where the slope of the tangent line is equal to 9 over 2. And the solution to that, or at least one of the solution, must be in between negative 1 and 3. So really, if we were to go and solve for this right here, uh, when we clean this up, this equation will become 6x squared minus 4x minus 16 at the 9 over, that would be minus 7, is equal to 0. So there must be an x value in between there, or must be a c value in between there, right? So uh, if we were to go and solve for this, we would say um, x is going to equal to, and the quadratic formula will apply 4 plus a minus square root of 4 square minus um, 4 ac all over 2a and that cleans up to be 112 all over 12. So um, if you actually do the calculation, you would have 1.22 and negative 0 0.548. So uh, the mean values suggest that there must be at least um, 
a solution to this equation right here, which we could go and find. And that would be here and here, and both of those are within the negative 1 and 3. Now, so why do we want to do that? Why can't we just go ahead and set up the equation and solve, right? So not always the case um, that we want to or, or can't solve or want to actually solve. Um, with this concept, with this theorem, we can say, oh, hey, there must be... Um, there must be some um, point C in between there such that this will happen. Um, so this is good for, I think, programming purposes, right? Can we narrow down on the interval such that this could happen? Okay, so another example um, that is in your book or uh, in your notes is um, the Rolle's value theorem. Okay, so what is Rolle's value theorem? Roll value theorem said, well, what happened if f of a is equal to f of b? So if we go and take a look here, so here is a, here is b, and let's say this is f of a, uh, f of b going to have to be the same, right? And this function, somehow this function is um, differentiable and continuous so again i cannot lift up when i draw this i cannot lift up my pencil uh, i gotta go up and then i gotta go around and then go back to here so differentiable uh continuous and differentiable so what happened if f of a is equal to f of b what will happen well your secant line is a horizontal line, right? So I think Rolle's value theorem to me is more interesting <laughs> is because it will tell you that there will be at least one point C um, in between the interval A and B where F prime of C has to equal to zero because this slope right here is equal to zero slope of the secant line. So there must be at least one C in between there where you will have a horizontal tangent line. In this case, we actually have two value C, right? Another one right here. Um, let's call this D and let's call this C. F prime of D is also equal to zero. So the Rolle's value theorem said there must be uh, at least a point C in between A and B such that the tangent line at x equal to c is horizontal. That means the derivative um, evaluated at c is equal to zero. Okay, so mean value theorem, continuous, differentiable, and then um, Rolle's value theorem, you add on the condition that f of a has to be equal to f of b. So the average rate of change is zero. So there must be a point C in between there um, that F prime of C is equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and play with these conditions and see what applies and what not, right? So uh, let's look at this function, F of X right here. And uh, with this function, we will go from A being one and B being nine. So uh, from observation, we can say that f of a is equal to f of b. So we're thinking, okay, maybe Rolle's value theorem will apply. Well, only if the function was continuous and differentiable inside that interval. Okay, so this function obviously is continuous because I can draw from here to here without lifting up my pencil, right? So continuous on the closed interval A to B. But guess what? This point right here, the sharp point, said that the function f of x is not differentiable at that point. So second condition does not meet. So mean value theorem cannot be applied. 
Um, and even if f of a is equal to f of b, Rho's value theorem um, cannot be applied either because at first you need to have those two first conditions met. Okay. Next, this function, as you can see, there's a jump right here. So not continuous, right? And as soon as you check not continuous, you can say mean value theorem does not work. Mean value theorem doesn't work. Rho value theorem definitely does not work there either. Okay, next, continuous. We're talking about the interval from negative 2 to 2. And yeah, continuous. Is it differentiable? Yes, I can, I can track the slope of the tangent line throughout there. And yeah, f of a is, so the first two conditions said mean value theorem will apply, right? And then you'll check to say, oh, hey, does the Rolls value theorem apply? And the answer is yes, because f of b is the same as f of a. So Rolls value theorem can apply here, and which means what? There is at least a point c in the interval from negative 2 to 2 such that f prime of c is equal to 0. Do you see where that is? Yeah, I think so. It's that right here, that point right there. And I will call that this, um, that point 0, and I found it right there. F prime of 0 is 0 at that point where the horizontal tangent line will happen in between negative 2 and 2. Okay, next you have a function that looks like this and you're like, okay, does the Rolls value theorem apply or will the mean value theorem apply? Well, let's go and see. First, we need to check to see if it's continuous on a closed interval and we're looking at the interval from negative 1 to 2. So this function right here, however it is, it has an asymptote at negative 2. How do I know that? I know my algebra, right? So make sure you understand what it means to have a vertical asymptote at negative 2. That's where the denominator is negative 2 right there. But we're considering the interval from here to 2. We're considering this interval from negative 1 to 2. So obviously, your function is going to be continuous in that interval. And I can take the derivative using the quotient rule, so it's differentiable. And is f of a equal to f of b? Well, let's check. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 over negative 1 plus 2, and that is negative 1 over 1, or we say that is negative 1. f of 2 is 2 over 2 plus 2, that is 2 over 4, or we say 1 half. So no, this does not. So then the mean value theorem will apply. Mean value theorem applies here, right? What does that mean? What does mean value theorem say? Um, mean value theorem say that there is a point C within the interval negative 1 to 2 where um, where the slope of the tangent line such that the slope of the tangent line at c or we say at prime of c is going to equal to f of 2 minus f of negative 1 all over 2 minus a negative 1 the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line whatever that turns out to be which you know if you want to calculate that would be 1 half minus a negative 1 all divided by 2 minus um, 1 and 2 minus 1 minus a negative 1 is 3. So this is 3 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 3 cancel is a half. So we have just seen that there is a point C within the interval where a prime of C has a slope of 1 half. Well, how is that useful? It depends on the scenario that you are talking about. Were you looking for some uh, something with a slope of one half? 
right? So this is a theorem that applies to all functions, and you apply it to use it in some type of scenario. Um, but that's how the theorem works. Okay, now does um, the mean value theorem or the rolls value theorem apply here in this to this function in the, in the interval? Um, oh no, not negative one um, to two, but um, this was meant to be from zero, zero to two, from zero to two. That's what is in your um, in your question in your notes. Okay, so um, continuous, yes, because um, the domain of this is all row numbers, right? All row number for a to the x, all row number for a polynomial, and you can always multiply those two numbers, and there's nothing weird happening. So your function is continuous. Um, is it differentiable? And the answer is yes. I can apply the product rule and find a derivative. So the mean value um, will apply for sure, right? And then we're asking, well, does the roll value theorem apply? Uh, in order to do that, um, you need to uh, check to see if f of a is equal to f of b, meaning f of 0 is, when you plug in 0, you will have 0 times e to the 0 power, which is 0 times 1, and that is 0. And then f of 2, when you plug in 2, you'll have 4 minus 4, which is also 0, times e to the second, and that is also 0. So yes, f of a is equal to f of b, so Rho's value theorem will apply here as well. So what does that mean? There must be, okay, Rho's theorem suggests that there is a point C in the interval from 0 to 2 when the slope of the tangent line f prime of C is equal to 0, meaning there's a horizontal tangent line happening in between x is equal to 0 and, and x is equal to 2. So it's in between there. Uh, do we want to go and find it? I don't. This question is asking if um, if the theorem will apply. Okay, now if in your scenario, whatever question you're working with, um, if it asks you to go find it, then you have to go and find it. Otherwise, you can just say, yes, the Rolls value theorem suggests that there must be at least a C in between 0 and 2, um, close interval 0 and 2, such that um, the derivative is zero.